What's the worst thing you have ever done? The worst thing I have ever done was pretty recent, and I'm trying like crazy to figure out a way to fix it without destroying my life. Long story short, I cheated on my wife. How I did it makes it so much more terrible. To put this all in perspective, my wife is very close to her brother. They are fraternal twins and have been inseparable their whole lives. Because of this, I have gotten to know my brother-in-law and his wife quite well. One night, my brother-in-law was out of town on business, so we had his wife over for dinner. My wife got called into work. She is a nurse in an ER. And so me and my sister-in-law were sitting at the house alone, talking and drinking wine by my pool. After a few glasses, some horse playing led to her falling in. While her clothes were in the dryer, we sat and talked with her in nothing but a towel. I don't know how it got started since we had gotten pretty drunk, but the towel ended up coming off and the next thing I know, we were having sex. I wish we could just pretend it never happened and get on with our lives, but unfortunately, she got pregnant. Her and her husband had been trying for a while, but apparently his equipment hadn't been up to the task. He'd been gone for a week by the time me and her slept together, so we are fairly sure it is mine. He was with her when she got morning sickness and made her take a pregnancy test. He is out of his mind excited and has already told everybody. We have somehow kept our cool so far and nobody suspects anything, but sooner or later it will come out, especially since my wife and her brother are Asian and both me and my sister-in-law are white. She is now four months along, and to compound things more, my wife is currently three months pregnant. I don't know what to do. I can't sleep. And every day is torture, while I wait for my life to implode around me. A lot of people are calling me a terrible person, saying I deserve what I am getting. Hasn't anybody woken up the morning after drinking and found out that you did something you completely regret? This feels like that X100. I'm also not just concerned for myself, like many people accuse either. This will be totally devastating to the entire family. And to make matters worse, it isn't like they can just kick us out of their lives like we deserve. They will have a constant reminder of the betrayal. With all the pain it would cause, I am somewhat considering doing what many people consider the immoral thing and just praying nobody finds out. People say what I did is wrong and lying about it is worse. But I am. Where I am now. I can't change that I just want to make sure as little further pain comes of this as possible. I will suffer for the rest of my life. And so will my sister-in-law. Isn't that enough? To make matters worse, I have realized that until I made this post... I had almost suppressed the whole thing. I mean, I had to work so hard to act like I was happy for them, that everything was fine, that I had almost convinced myself. I had been drinking a lot, but it wasn't until I started writing this that all my emotions really came to the surface. I hadn't actually been trying to figure out a way to fix it. I had been avoiding it. I haven't even talked to my sister-in-law about it, since a week or two after they found out she was pregnant. I decided I'm going to talk to her today. We have to make sure we are on the same page and agree on where to go from here. It is really kind of a relief to actually finally talk about this. Killed someone. I was driving home from work. Mind you, I worked at a gas station. I was 18 years old. I was the closer, closed at midnight. Never took me long to count things down and close up because I'd start early as there usually wouldn't be any customers around 11.50 or so. So, by 12.06, I'm done. Shut it down and take off. You make a left out to head to my house. At the very first stoplight not even 30 yards away, I'm going through it. And bam! I hit something and look to my right and just see a body go down. It was traumatizing. I just screamed and hit the brakes. It was midnight, raining, and she was wearing all black clothing. On my life, I swear I wasn't on my phone, my radio wasn't even playing. I had just pulled out of work. I got out and called 911. My tire was parked on her. The operator told me not to move the vehicle off her. Cops came. 
The first thing that was told to me was, this is not my fault. Took me for a drug screen and alcohol test. I passed. Got to go home. Never was put in handcuffs. I was told at the hospital she had died. She was 49 years old and was from a mental facility in my town. She wasn't supposed to be out past 9 p.m. Side note, she was walking in the middle of the road. There was no sidewalk, but enough road to the side she could have safely walked on, but she was in the middle. But yeah, this event lives with me, even though I didn't do anything wrong. Threw an ice ball at my friend, missed, and hit this poor deaf girl in the head, knocking her down and destroying her hearing aid. I still feel bad about it 20 years later. When we were 12, my best friend and I were always bullied by this kid who lived in our complex. He was one of those sneak bullies too, who acted so lovely around adults, but was a real menace when they weren't around. So, one day, after he held my friend down and made him eat dog feces, we hatched a plan to put him out of commission. We found a Windex bottle and filled it with a bunch of different cleaning agents, one of them being bleach. Then we went looking for him. When we found him, he asked my friend if he was still hungry and wanted some more. When he came over to us, I squirted him right in the face with the bottle, a good few squeezes worth. He ended up going to the hospital with chemical burns and lost all of the sight in one eye and partial sight in the other. He Facebooked me a few years back and apologized for how he had treated us and actually thanked me for what we did to him. He said it was a real eye-opener, his pun, not mine, and he now works exclusively with blind children and says it's incredibly rewarding. Burned down an abandoned factory. It was recently closed down and myself and a few friends got out of school and went to have a look. We got in and found loads of half bottles of chemicals and we poured them all into this huge tub thing that looked like an oversized bath. We flicked lit matches in, not expecting much, but I think the fumes caught and it went up like a massive bonfire, reaching the roof and raining down flames, setting everything alight while we ran. It burned pretty much the whole main building part of the factory to the ground, and the fire service had to evacuate several streets as they thought there could be gas bottles on site, Thank God no one was injured or worse. The word on the street was the owners got a massive payout and were investigated for insurance fraud. No idea how that played out, though. The site is now a housing estate. When I was still a kid, there was a girl that clearly had some facial deformity, probably from some medical condition. Me and my friends thought it would be funny if I went up to her and called her the most beautiful girl I have ever seen. She started crying and I never saw her again. We weren't in the same class. Whenever I remember that moment, I hate myself and wish I could somehow make it up to her. Manipulated my stubborn dad, who kept putting the steam iron face down, even though I told him it's supposed to be stored upright as in the manual. So I poured water on the floor and ironing board to make it look like it leaked, and I said, I told you. It worked was playing with BB guns when I was younger. We were having a lot of fun and messing around shooting at ourselves. We had helmets. The BB guns had metal BBs. I shot at my friend and ended up hitting his eye. He lost his eyesight, and it affected me deeply. He and his family were telling me it was okay, and it was an accident. I was depressed for a while. That was about six, seven years ago, and I still think about it. It was a horrible experience. That friend and I don't talk anymore, but I hope he's doing well. When I was 10, my dad got me a BB gun. My neighbor was a bird enthusiast with feeders everywhere. It turns out I was an excellent shot. She was truly devastated. I will never forget the knock at the door. I learned a huge lesson that day, and now will only harm a brown recluse or a wasp that is threatening me. I'm really sorry, Phyllis. I was just a kid. I didn't actually do it, obviously. But the worst thing I've ever planned to do is to commit suicide in my mother's room. Planned on painting her bedroom wall with my head. She caused me a lot of torment, and at my lowest and angriest it felt like revenge. I'm glad I didn't go through with it because it likely would have destroyed her. She's not evil, she's just not a good person, and what she put me through didn't warrant what I had planned. I just wanted somebody to be accountable. When I was a teenager, 
I went on a cruise with my parents and their friends. I had to share a room with their daughter, who was my age. We were always arguing. Our personalities just didn't mesh. Well, after one particularly bad fight, I went into our shared bathroom, grabbed her toothbrush, and used it on any surface I could find in there. Inside the toilet, on the floor, shower doors, etc. It's definitely not the worst thing someone could do, but definitely not nice haha. -ha. Oh god, this is extremely painful to remember. I accidentally stepped on my friend's two three-month-old kitty on my friend's birthday. There were three kitties and she didn't close them and didn't tell us about them either, so they were just wandering around. We were sitting, eating and chilling and I suddenly got a call from work. I normally wouldn't answer but it was around 9-9.30 p.m., so I supposed it was something serious. As it was very loud inside, I just ran outside and it happened. The kitty was alive for approximately an hour and a half after that. I'm not going to go into details. I have no words to express how painful it was to see the kitty slowly pass away. It's been two years since it happened, and I still can't forgive myself for this. Knowing it was an accident doesn't change a thing for me. I'm so, so sorry. I wish the kitty knew I would never, ever hurt him. I wish the kitty knew how sorry I am it happened, and I wish it never happened. May the universe bless his little soul, and may his soul be at peace. I wholeheartedly love cats. I have five cats myself, and I live for and thanks to them. I am forever sorry, and I hope God forgives me one day. Out of compassion, I thought I was helping my younger brother deal with his drug addiction, but in reality, I enabled him. Manipulation feeds on love, a hard lesson. I now practice tough and pragmatic love with him. It's still a long journey ahead for him. Decided to drink instead of showing up to my job, made me lose that job which put me into a rage. I punched my TV, cut my hand open, and started driving to the emergency room. On the way there, Someone pulled out right in front of me while I was going 45 mumpage, got in a car crash that totaled my beautiful Corolla, broke my collarbone, and my innocent girlfriend that was riding with me broke her foot in three different spots. The paramedics took my BAC with a breathalyzer, and it was .015 from being over the legal limit. My girlfriend was fuming angry that I was drinking and driving. She later got a blood clot from her foot healing that turned into a pulmonary embolism, and she spent a week in the hospital on New Year's. We watched the ball drop on the hospital TV. She could have died with that P.E. All because I decided to drink instead of going to work. All because I couldn't control my anger. I put her in that position, and she could have easily died. Broke into a former employer in the middle of the night, there was an emergency door that wasn't 100% secure, so we got in that way. I kept a spare key to get into the office. They got the front door keys back. They never asked me for the office key. Got into the safe with relative ease. The new manager wasn't as smart as she thought she was, so the new safe combo was found quickly. We took enough money out of the safe so it would create chaos when they did the weekly safe count, but not enough to be noticed at a quick glance. We sabotaged some equipment and took any small tools that wouldn't immediately be noticed as missing. The next couple of weeks were probably a nightmare for the new manager, but we couldn't be suspected of any wrongdoing because they never knew they'd been robbed. Three of us were in on this caper. Not proud of myself now, but we did a thorough and efficient job of it and got away clean. There was a guy who used to shoplift at my work, always knew his face, and would generally tell him to get lost before he stole anything. Saw him come in and stuff a bottle of wine up his tracky jacket and make for the door. I said I saw him and was going to pass CCTV footage to the police. He yells and swears at me but hands me the bottle. I was kind of angry about it, so I sent the footage of him stealing to the police anyway. His defense of he gave it back didn't really work as that happened in a camera black spot. I denied him putting it back and said our stock was off. He ended up going to prison for four months because of his track record. He got into a fight there and got stabbed and died. 
He wasn't exactly a model citizen, but I really felt responsible. It was a pretty messed up situation. Teenage years, when we all lived at the pool all summer. A mutual friend tries to set up a blind date between me and a friend of hers. This was before cell phones and social media, so it starts with just a phone number. Me and girl talk on the phone every evening for a week or so. We flirt, it's going well, and we decide to catch a movie. I knew she had been to the pool, but never when I was there. So I had no idea about her looks, until other friends tell me. Turns out she's a very big girl. The phrase used that I still remember is, she wasn't able to climb out of the pool. She flopped on the side and had to roll out. My young, idiot, shallow self wanted no part of that. My proud-to-be-a-jerk buddy decides it sounds like fun to be my stand-in. So the movie turns into a group date, I find a different girl to bring, and my buddy pretends to be me. The worst part, we had been at the pool at the same time. I just didn't know it. She already knew who I was and what I looked like. So she knew I had tagged in someone else and showed up with a different girl to our date. She cried the whole time. Go ahead and judge me. I deserve it. My grandfather was a sheriff for 30 years and carried the same gun. I sold it to buy drugs. I was also in prison when he died and couldn't make the funeral. Side note, got clean in 2002, and every hope and dream I thought was forfeited has been restored. I don't have that life partner to share things with, but I am a single dad of three. Have full custody and have had for 10 years. In fourth grade, during an argument with another kid, I shoved him, and he fell out the window behind him. The old school building had large windows that opened all the way. We were on the third floor. He hit the grass and died on impact. That image is burned into my head forever. Everyone was mad at me at first, but eventually accepted it was a terrible accident. The building was demolished four years later, and a parking lot now stands in that spot. Subscribe and like if my content is interesting to you. I post new video every day.